Hello. Welcome to the MuseCore Cafe for today, August 7th, 2019. Uh, my name is Mark Sabatella. I am the Director of Education for MuseCore, and this is my weekly series of informal uh, chats where I talk about some aspect of MuseCore that interests me and uh, hopefully interests you. So my topic for today is A, making sure that I'm broadcasting because mm -hmm. I don't see it yet on my phone. So, yep, there we go. All right. Very good. And I hear sound. Excellent. Okay, so topic for today is accessibility. This is the topic um, that I mentioned I've been wanting to talk about for a while and now it feels like the perfect opportunity. And I also mentioned um, that I have a special guest with me, so let me um, actually uh, turn... Oh, my face is not on the screen, oh, well. which is not how I wanted this. So, okay, full screen plus headshot. All right, we're going to go to just headshot for the moment. Hey, okay, there's me. Okay, and... This is Elizabeth. Hello there. That's Elizabeth. I'm Elizabeth. Great. So, Elizabeth is a student here at Regis University where I teach, and she is going to be taking a course, uh, Foundations in Music, which is basically a music theory course, and then other music theory courses. And uh, our goal is to figure out how, as a uh, blind musician, we can interact with notated music. Absolutely. And uh, this is a topic, this is what brought me to MuseScore originally, was having a blind student in a theory course I taught 10 years ago, Sam, who you know, right? Yes, I sure do. All right, I wish I could, here, wait a minute. I'm trying to, okay, now we're, <laughs> now we're sort of both in the frame, but not really. Okay. okay. Um, uh, I'll, just, I'll just move it around. Um, okay. So, uh, we, Sam and I worked out uh, uh, some systems of things that enabled us to communicate in notated music, um, and it got us through the year, and uh, we were pretty proud of what we did, actually, and we got, you know, Sam was yeah. producing notated music using a text-based system called ABC, where you could write m music just with a text editor, just you'd use letters like A, B, and C, and then numbers to indicate durations, mm -hmm. and then there were programs that could convert that to standard notation, so Sam and I could both read and write ABC directly, but we could also then produce standard notation from it so she could produce uh, printed music for other musicians, and that, that worked well enough. But during the course of that year, one of my other students said, hey, well, you should check out MuseScore and see it. that's free open source software. You should uh, um, see if it can do anything for you. And I checked it out, and the answer was, no, it actually wasn't very accessible at the time. But it was pretty cool software. <laughs> so I got involved with MuseScore, and 10 years later, here I am. Um, but accessibility has remained, like, one of my main points of interest. So, um, so now we've got an opportunity to revisit this, and we've made all sorts of improvements over the 10 years. When I say we, I mean, I've done some of the work. I've had other students through the Google Summer of Code do work, and we've had just other developers do work, to the point now where I think we're going to find uh, that it's actually going to be quite usable and do what we need it to do. And so I just installed a version of MuseScore that's got some of the latest improvements in it. These, the latest improvements are not in the official release right now, but I just installed it on Elizabeth's computer. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show Elizabeth how to do some stuff. And uh, we'll see what feedback she has, because Elizabeth, you say you have, uh, you're starting a business giving accessibility uh, I sure consulting, am. right? I sure am. And I'm also starting this business, which will also give general consulting information about blindness. So if you are curious about how blind people interact with the world and, and whatnot, that would be the place to go. Gotcha. I can hook you up. All right. Thank any, you so any... much for the opportunity. Oh, you're welcome. To, to appear on the live stream. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this can be fun. Yeah. Um, so, is there any any other words you'd want to say before I start trying to guide you through stuff? <laughs> I'm I'm eager to jump in. All right. Music notation and and this stuff is is kind of new for me too. So. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Now that's a point because a lot of uh, a lot of blind musicians really don't learn music notation of any form. I mean, sometimes some people learn Braille, but some people don't yeah. learn Braille or only a bare minimum of Braille. And that's is right. that is that what you would say? You've got some Braille music knowledge. Yes, some. But that's not your normal way of interacting with music, right? Correct. Okay. I, I have perfect pitch, and so my ear has carried me 
far, but it can only carry me so far without the aid of written music notation. Okay, so um, those of you who uh, take part in these cafes uh, regularly uh, will know that normally when you're watching, you're going to be seeing MuseScore, the screen, uh, you know, you'll be seeing MuseScore and then my face in the corner. Um, that's not going to be especially relevant to what we're doing right now. I mean, I might show you what's on the screen sometimes, but the real experience of using MuseScore, uh, the way we're going to be using it now, is about not looking at what you're seeing. We're not going to be basing anything on what we can see on the screen, um, but just on the audible feedback we get. And so uh, on, on both my computer and Elizabeth's computer, we have software called NVDA, which is a screen reader, mm -hmm. and it will read aloud things. It'll read text aloud normally, but we've made it in MuseScore over the years. We've imp improved gradually so that everything in the score can be read aloud, more or less. Right. So that's what we are going to be uh, hopefully uh, seeing is how well that is working and then seeing how you can navigate through the score to basically read music using MuseScore and then also how to write a little bit. Correct. Okay. So uh, let's get your computer woken up. Um, right, and yes. uh, I'm actually going to close MuseScore and open it up again. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just okay. going to, because uh, um, we, we won't worry about that. Okay. Um, I want you. Yes. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here. All right. Um, I just, I'm going to tell you that Alt Left and Alt Right mm -hmm. is going to be your uh, your main navigation keys. Okay. So I want you to start pressing Alt Left and Alt Right, and I'm telling you, uh, well, uh, and okay. you tell me what you uh, are able to perceive about what's what's going on. Sure thing. Rest measure voice one measure one beat one staff one. Barlin normal Barlin measure two beat one staff one. Rest measure voice one measure two beat one staff one. Barlin normal Barlin measure three beat one staff one. Rest measure voice one measure three beat one staff one. Barlin normal Barlin measure four beat one staff one. Oh wow. Rest measure voice one measure four beat one staff one. Barlin Let's normal see. Barlin measure four beat one staff one. So a pretty symmetrical <laughs> looking score this, here. This this is a completely empty <laughs> score. You're hearing a rest and a bar Barlin uh, because Barlin. it doesn't know how to say I'll, Barline. I'll, I'll change the <laughs> lexicon later. Oh, so can I? so you can do that? I can. Ah, nice. Yeah, it would be nice if it pronounced Barline. Yes, correctly. not Barlin. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have a completely empty score there, and as you're pressing alt left and alt right, it's traversing the rests and the bar lines, and that's because that's all there is. Right. Um, uh, let me think, where are you right now? Um, so one of the things is, oh, I see you're in measure four, you're on the bar line at the end of mark, measure four. Go ahead and hit alt right one more time. Okay. Edit alt plus E. File alt plus F. Edit all plus split button. Rest measure voice one there measure four beat one staff one. Okay, so now now hit alt right a couple more times. Sorry. Okay. Barlin normal Barlin one measure more. five beat treble clef measure five beat Ooh, one staff clef. one. So you are seeing the treble clef or hearing the treble clef because it is now moved to the next line of music. Wow. And in notated music, we usually put a treble clef at we, we, whatever the clef is, it okay. gets repeated at the start of every line. Now, the first thing I start to wonder is, I wonder if that's actually useful for, 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 for score reading purposes to be told that there's another treble clef there. I mean, right. I don't think Braille music does that. That it doesn't is have a concept of a clef, really. That is correct. It does line up, it goes line by line. But you wouldn't do something at the start of the next. Well, you, you could have a hand notification, right? Then they have like left hand and right hand yeah. uh, symbols. Yes. So um, one of the things that you'll have to be aware of as you're reading uh, music in MuseScore is when it comes to the start of another line, it's going to tell you about a clef. That's how you'll know you're on the start of a new line. Um, would Lime Allow? So Lime Allowed is the name of the commercial program that does similar sorts of things. It is a notation program that most people are probably, Lime, I should say, is a notation Lime. program that most people are probably not very familiar with. Lime Allowed is a specialized version of Lime that is designed to work well with a screen reader and have keyboard shortcuts for everything and so forth. So Lime Allowed is the program if for a, a blind musician who wants to get into music notation, Lime Aloud has traditionally been 
the the main option and mm -hmm. it's not cheap right? no it's not cheap and the other thing is that lime aloud uses something called jaws scripts and that is designed to work with a screen reader called jaws by freedom scientific and so that screen reader is also about a thousand dollars more expensive than the free and open source nvda uh, gotcha another yes. advantage yeah so nvda is the free uh screen reader that we work w would do most um, would, would you say most blind people using a computer uh, splurge for JAWS or get grants or whatever, or do a lot of people really rely on NVDA? I would say that the trend is going towards more people relying on NVDA. However, JAWS still has a huge percent of the market, right. about 50%. Now, Sam used Window Eyes, I think it was called? Yep, Window Eyes by JW Micro. Is that still a thing? It sure is. Okay. I don't hear about it so much anymore. Yeah, it's... It's because JAWS works better. Ah, okay. There you go. Okay, so um, so um, so you have used Lime Aloud in the past some, right. right? Yes. What what we were just talking about coming to New Line of Music and it's reading a cleft. Does do you remember if Lime Aloud would have done that? I don't think it did. However, I'll bet you it did because. That's important for the for the sighted world in music. Yeah. Okay. So you would have to know that. You you would, and so and also, one of the reasons these I mean these alt left and alt right shortcuts we have are designed to go through every every element in the score, but right. not just so that the screen reader can read them, but also so you can do interesting things with them like edit them. Like if I want to change that clef to a bass clef or if I wanted to make right. it invisible, I need to be able to select it. And so the keyboard, being able to get to it by keyboard is going to be useful no matter what. What occurs to me though, just from just from going through that empty score, is that MuseScore has what's called continuous view. <coughs> In continuous view, bless you. Um, Thank you. There's um, <coughs> continuous view basically presents the music instead of on a page with like one line, you get to the end of the page and then go to the left and start the next line, left to right, like like you would normally read things. Um, Braille reads left to right also, right? Correct. Left to right and then down the page. Correct. Um, so um, continuous view says, no, no, let's just, let's just have one long strip. It's like word wrapping, yeah. right? Yes. So continuous view has one long strip and will um, scroll the the score and so you won't ever see those clefts in the middle of the score when you're in continuous view so okay. one thing that could be a little less distracting um, as a blind person trying to read a score would be to be in continuous view so that the 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 that whole business of line breaks which isn't really relevant to what you're doing goes away right um, I wonder, do you remember if Lime Aloud had any concept like that? I believe it was more similar to Microsoft Word and other documents okay. to where lines began and ended. Okay, so I'm, um, you know, not going to totally just obsess about like comparing ourselves to Lime Aloud, but I am interested in learning things. Okay. okay, so this was an empty score. The next interesting thing to do, though, is to have a not empty score, right? Yes. So, um... You can get email right here, right? You're 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 online, email. Yeah. All right. The easiest thing to do then is I'm going to email you. All right. So let me come back um, right. and let. Let uh, me get signed into to my email then. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to come back to my full screen. All right. So um, those of you who have been following things know that my very favorite uh, example piece for almost anything in the world is Mary Had a Little Lamb. Um, and I use it to demonstrate all sorts of stuff. Internet. So we're about to use Mary Had a Little Lamb as Internet. soon as I email okay. Elizabeth a copy of MSN this, which bar had I been thinking. MSN bar out. Oh. Address and Address and Address and Selection removed. Gmail dash. Right. Not just a list. Previous. Okay. Next button. Just right. a moment. So. Tab select. Tab two. Okay. Start. Inter Internet Explorer. Home page dash Internet uh -huh. Explorer. I'm I'm and yes, I'm using Internet Explorer. Ah. Is that a, is that 
for like a specific reason or just it's just convenient? It works a lot better with my than Microsoft Edge huh? with screen readers. And what about things like Firefox or Google Chrome or any of any of those sorts of things? I just have haven't really had time to install it since I only use the Windows partition part time. Yeah, that's the other interesting thing. You're using a Mac, but you I are sure using am. Windows a Windows partition on that Mac, right? I, I use Boot Camp to install Windows on that Mac. That is correct. That's very cool. Yeah, it's it's very handy for somebody in in my situation. Gotcha. Okay. Address is. Um, because we don't know, we know MuseScore doesn't work with VoiceOver, which is the Mac screen reader, but we don't know how far apart, how far away we are. We're pretty sure if it doesn't work, it's because of something in one of the libraries we use. Qt is the, this library, or Qt is supposed to be pronounced. Um, and we suspect there's some issue with Qt and, uh, um, okay, so I just sent you an email. Wonderful. Tab. You can tell I'm kind of used to using jobs. Ah, uh, there's Terms that link. too. Yes. No next checkbox. No previous check. Google our list with two. See. Change language or region combo box English. I, I should uh, try putting it on the flash drive Gmail, instead. G oh, that might be handy. Okay. All right, we're going to try Where the flash is drive. that? Because that's going to be a little bit faster right. for our intents and purposes. Yes. List All right, so. Link sign in. Pain. Oh, I'm not even signed in. To continue to edit. Out of edit. O. O. T. S. E. A I L, not in a table cell, not your computer. Not in a table cell. That's what you told me that you would hear. Yep. Whenever I try to use voiceover commands, it never works. <laughs> Button see. next. All right. Button for got email edit. Here comes flash drive. All right. And there is a Cut file on there. You can just, you know, double click it or whatever you do to open files. On the root. Uh, yes. Actually, we'll need to open Copy it in... Cut control. So, actually, can you let me drive for a second? Yeah. Cortana window. All right. Because, because MuseScore isn't Muse installed score normally, double-clicking it won't work normally either. Red. I just need to open three. it right. manually, Pictures. which I'm happy Full. to do. All Task right. switch. MuseScore 3 left so. red. Gmail dash inter... MuseScore 3 dash... Mute Come on. Tap Gmail dash internet. Score treble clef measure 5 beat 1 staff 1. It's just reading the same thing. <laughs> file all split it's like it's in the MP4. file all I Lex Lex tree items view items view list Come on. Uh, scorch open Mary line headline align little line SAT I'm not used to MSCC using her uh, keyboard and uh, I'm not Gmail used to having to click Explorer. touch pads but I know Max generally do that ah, all right so we are now back in MuseScore, and um, we are back in MuseScore, and this score is loaded. So now I want you to start using Alt Left and Alt Right, and let's hear what happens. Okay. Vertical frame title Mary had a little SATB. Barlin normal Barlin measure one beat one staff one. Treble clef measure one beat one staff okay. one. Key signature G major. E oh. minor measure one beat one staff one. Okay. Time signature four slash four time measure oh, one beat cool. one staff one. Note B four oh, wow. quarter voice one measure one beat one staff one. Wow, it's exactly like Lynn Aloud. All right, that's that's good to know. So it's reading things one at a time. Um, go ahead and all right again. I expect it to be A this time. Oh, Note D four D. half voice two measure. So. Note A four quarter voice one measure. Uh -huh. Stop for a second. What, what could you, I mean, that read pretty quickly. What do you think just happened? I think there's, there's a D in between the B and the A. Yeah, so go hit all left again now to get back to the D. No, D4, there's D4. Voice two measure one beat one, staff one. I don't know how to make it repeat the status. Oh, wait a minute. I think there is a shortcut in NVDA that says just read the status line so it'll reread what it just did. You know what that is? I don't remember what it is. I think it's 
it's NVDA key end, except you don't have an end key on that thing. Right. So I would probably hit hit alt right and alt left and then listen carefully. Okay. Note B four quarter again. voice one measure one beat one staff okay. one. Note D four half voice two measure one beat one staff one. It says voice two in there. Oh yeah, so it's a harmony. This is so the title of this piece was Mary Had a Little S A T B. This is an S A T B arrangement. So there's a piano and alto in the top staff and there is a bottom staff that has oh, the tenor and bass. Thanks. And as long as you only use alt left and alt right, it's only going to read that top staff. Wow. But if you then use alt and up and alt up and alt down, it will read all the voices on the top staff but then will eventually go down to the bottom staff when it runs out of notes in the top staff. So that is what, yeah. what that D was. So when you're listening to this you kind of need to be really paying attention to the voice business and that is another thing where I wonder if a, a, a command that says stay in the same voice could be useful or if you just get used to hearing Ooh. it read read voice information. I, I would say both yeah. are a possibility. It's always a good idea to pay attention to everything <laughs> the screen reader says. And one of the things that we know is an issue is right now it's reading a lot of information that doesn't change. Like it's, it keeps telling you staff one, it keeps telling you measure one. And until right. you leave measure one, until you leave staff one, that's maybe redundant information. And okay. so what we'd like to improve it to not read the redundant information. And so that way when the voice changes, you'll hear voice two and you'll, oh, the voice just changed or when the staff changes, you'll hear that. So that's, that's an improvement that we, we kind of have on our list of things to do. All right, so um, just keep browsing around a little bit. Okay. I think I'm going to try the up and down. Yeah. Note G three half voice one measure one beat one staff two. Note G two half voice two measure. Note G three half voice one. Me Note D four half voice. Note B four quarter voice one. Oh wow. Note note A four note G four quarter voice one measure one note E four half voice two measure one beat three staff one. Note A four quarter voice one measure one beat Barlin normal Barlin measure two beat one staff one. That's telling you now you're at the end of that measure because you're on the, the Barlin. The Barlin, <laughs> otherwise known as a Barlin. Split button. Okay, so hold, hold it for a second. Yeah. Split button. This is NVDA keeps reading split button to us at random points, and we have no idea what this means. I don't suppose you've encountered this before. Oh man, I've encountered it on the earlier ver on the official version of of ViewScore three. As right, well. but you 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 don't know. You haven't heard that in other programs to know what that's because I wish I knew where it was. I I can figure it I've, out eventually, but I've heard. In File Explorer. Okay, that's good to know. It could have to do with the fact that there's separate panes in this window, and it could be telling me about that somehow. Um, but it's annoying that it keeps reading split button at random times. It'll say split button, just, split button. And for previous versions of, N of NVDA would not even pronounce the word split understandably. It'd be like, split button, split button, split yeah. button, split button. And was like, what are you even saying? Now it's very clearly saying split button. Yeah, it, it's also important to note that. The default syn speech synthesizer with NVDA is called eSpeak, and I'm using the Microsoft SAPI 5 voices that come standard oh. with the computer. Okay. So that could add some clarity and a little bit of a less metallic feel to the consoles. Interesting. I okay. I, I definitely know that the version of NVDA I have, I just am using all default settings, uh, sounds better than it did a year ago That's or a couple mm. years ago. Yeah. I remember when eSpeak couldn't speak with an American accent, ah. had to do a British accent, and now it, and then about six years later, suddenly it could. Okay. All right. So um, just keep browsing around. There's one interesting thing in this measure that you'll get to experience, and then we'll talk about writing music a little bit. Okay. Note F4 half voice 2 measure 2 beat 1 staff oh. 1. Oh. Okay. It said F. But it's really an F sharp. It's really an F sharp. Would I'm surprised at no point did it say that. Could you hit alt right and then left again? That's the best way I know to get it yeah. to read it again. No B no file alt plus F. Mm. Oops. Split button. No B note F four half voice two measure two B one staff one. So there was no indication of the sharp at all, was there? Right. 
But it was a good thing I knew I was in G major. Yeah. That's the only sharp. All right. So had there been... <laughs> Had there been an actual natural, hopefully it would have read the natural sign. Hopefully. So I want you to hit um, hit control right. That's going to skip a measure. Note A four quarter voice one measure three beat one staff one. And now alt right again. It's going to take you to the next note. Note G four half voice two measure three beat one staff one accidental natural. There you go. So it read the it read the accidental natural. The reason it was a natural on the G is because Courtesy accidentals. Is that a thing in Braille, by the way? Do you know what I mean by that term? Hmm. I'm by, I, I know courtesy. what accidentals mean, but yeah. I'm not sure about courtesy. So in, um, in uh, standard notation, if you put an accidental in, on a note in one measure, it's supposed to last for the duration of that measure. But then in the yeah. next measure, like if I put a G sharp in one measure, in the next measure, the G is natural again. But as a courtesy to people, you put a natural sign on it anyhow because they might have not seen the bar line. Ooh. They might have just not remembered. Oh, it's not G-sharp anymore. So you're supposed to kind of cancel it even though technically it's not necessary. So right. um, when I describe it that way, I know Braille uh, mm -hmm. incorporates the duration and the pitch into the same cell, right? That is true. But accidentals, I forget how they're done. I, I would have to look more at that, okay. too. Okay. I've got information on uh, Braille music, so I can um, look at that, too. Um, anyhow, so that's what happened. So it read the accidental on the thing. But it didn't just, it didn't, when it read the, F, what's interesting to me is when you were on the F sharp, I was, uh, hit control left. Note B four quarter and then voice can, one minute. And then alt right. Note F4 half voice 2 measure 2 beat 1 staff 1. So what's interesting to me about this is it reads the note as F, but when I actually look at the status bar, which it's in principle it's kind of reading the status line to you, mm -hmm. um, the status line says F sharp. Ah. At least it's got F and then the little sharp sign. It looks like a tic-tac-toe board. Um, uh, so I'm, it's a little interesting to me that the status bar does call it F-sharp, but the screen reader only reads the F. That, that is interesting. That's, I, that's not good. So I'm I, taking notes on that. I was curious, like, is it implied that that's a sharp since we're in GH? It is, but wouldn't it be better if it just said F-sharp? Yeah, all right. So because yes, um, I can clearly hear it's an F-sharp. I'm going to add this to the chat. Um, hey, by the way, folks, um, there's some of you watching online. Feel free to be commenting, questioning, yes. and so forth. Feel uh, free to I, ask questions. Yeah, I forgot to say that up front, but, you know. Um, Absolutely. Uh, that's definitely people who are watching live. That is that is the benefit of watching live is you get to ask questions. That's right. That's, live yeah. is very, very good for interacting. But realistically, we know that you know a handful of people watch this this particular uh, broadcast live, and then yeah. many, many, many more watch it over the upcoming week. Um, so, um, yeah. So in, I'm writing a note and putting it in the chat so that I will have reference to it. All right. Cool. All right, so um, so the next thing that, so basically as you read the score, it's going to keep doing this. You, you're going to use alt left and alt right, alt mm -hmm. up and up down, alt up and down, and it's going to read you the notes one at a time. If mm -hmm. there's any notes, if there's any information attached to the note, like accidentals, you heard it read, read that. Go okay. ahead and, go ahead and press control right again. It's going to move to the next measure. Okay. Note A four quarter voice one And then measure alt three, right, which will take you to one. the G. Note G four half voice two measure three beat one. Now alt right one more time. Note A four okay. quarter voice one measure I was three beat two. Curious to see if it actually went to the accidental because sometimes if there's a if there's a marking on a note it'll read it when you get to the note but when you hit alt right it'll actually go to that marking and that allows you to edit it and so forth. Oh wow! But apparently we didn't do that with accidentals for whatever reason, which is fine. I was just curious. That's okay. But other other markings it will do that. So some markings will get read when you get to the note. Other markings, like if there were dynamic markings, will only be read. When you like, if there's a dynamic marking attached to a note, it won't read it when you get to the note. But as soon as you hit Alt Right, it'll read that dynamic. Correct. 
Okay. Right. So this particular piece of music, I didn't add anything interesting like dynamics. Okay. Um, so I just uh, I used it as a demonstration of uh, how to write SATB arrangements. Oh. So um, you are going to be writing exercises and so forth for this foundations class. And so mm -hmm. we want to see to what extent we can get that happening. So right, um, right now... We have this, Mary had a little SATB score open, mm -hmm. but we also still have that empty score that started off in MuseScore. So I want to right. get you to that score. Um, but I also want to do some combination of telling you how to do things and letting you figure out how to do things. If I told you this program had two scores open, how would you think you would get to the other one? Maybe by the window menu bar, perhaps? Let's so see. this doesn't have one. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> So there's tabs. Thing I would try. There are tabs mm -hmm. here. So try control tab. Unknown. Split button. Unknown. Split button. Ah, oh, okay. Split Let it keep button. reading. Split button. Score treble clef measure five beat one staff one. Okay, right. so you are in the Think other score, that. but it didn't read the title of it. That the title of it's just untitled. Hit all, hit control tab again. Okay. Unknown. Split button. <laughs> Split button. Bunch of split buttons. Split button. Split button. They don't make you pay for Slide what you okay, said earlier. Quarter, quarter, voice one, measure three, beat okay, two, staff so one. what I can see right now is it's not reading when you change scores. It's not reading the title mm -hmm. of the score you changed to. So that's unfortunate. Read title. I, I think that's something that could be fixed, though. Oh, I can fix anything. I can fix anything. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, not <laughs> anything, but I can fix a lot of things. So the, I'm, I'm taking these notes because these are things that I uh, want to go in and fix. Or, you know, we've got, you know, open, it's open source software. There's lots of people who will be capable of fixing this, but, you know, I'm the one with the uh, incentive to get it done. Open source is the best. It is awesome. Okay. So uh, control tab again. It'll take you back to the untitled score. Okay. Unknown. I don't even Split. know what the unknown is, but okay. So at this point, you are back in that first empty score, um, and you currently have uh, the last thing you had selected was that treble clef. It's still selected. Right. What we want to do is get back to the beginning of the score. So to do that, hit Control Home. Okay. Let's see. I bet I could do this. Wonder if that. Works. That. You'll, I believe, probably the FN and left arrow will function as home. Yeah. And then with control. That it does. There we go. But it didn't read it. Wait a minute. Oh, did you did you turn off the reading? No. Okay. Every once in a while, it seems to like get itself confused and it stops reading. Hit Alt right again. Time signature okay. four it's, slash it's reading four again. Time so I don't I don't know why it didn't one. read when you did that, but. So what I will tell you is for reasons I don't fully understand, every once in a while it does not read something. Usually just hitting alt left and alt right will wake it up again. <laughs> like, hey, um, don't know what's going on with that, but uh, I will just tell you that that's... Treble clef measure one beat one staff one. Okay, so I want to teach you how to enter some notes. Okay. okay. So Ooh, this is exciting. Yeah. So to enter some notes, uh -huh. um, we are going to... Uh, there, there is a toolbar that you can actually access using tab and so forth, but we're going to try to do as much as possible with keyboard shortcuts because it's going to be way easier. Yes. Okay. Um, there are a couple things we're going to need to use the toolbar and navigation to do, but not much that you're going to need to know. Um, all right, so the, the MuseScore has two basic modes. There's the mode where you're just navigating around and it's reading stuff to you, and then there's note input mode, and that's where you can enter mm -hmm. notes. Kind so, of like around. Okay, good. That's good to know because MuseScore is very similar in its use model to Sibelius and very not similar to Finale. Uh, and I don't really remember enough about Lime Allowed because I haven't used it. From, I, I used it once 10 years ago when I was investigating these things. Um, all right, so you're going to press N to go to node input mode. N. Rest measure voice one measure one beat one staff one. So when you press N, it's going to take whatever is selected at the moment, and it's going to put you in node input mode in that measure. So you know, you'll want oh. to get to the measure that you want to be in, but when you start off, you'll be in measure one, so everything's okay. all good. Okay. So to enter notes, mm -hmm. there's a two-step process, um, and again, I don't remember how Lime Allowed does it. You will first select a duration and then a pitch. Okay. And the durations are the number keys, and yeah. four, five, and six are eighth note, quarter note, and half note. Okay. 
So um, pick one. Yeah, four, five, six, like yeah. Five. So it read to you that that it so that you pressed five. It didn't tell you that meant quarter note, but I'm telling you it means quarter note. So you right. sort sort of have to know that. Mm -hmm. But now, type a letter. Note D5, quarter voice, one measure, one beat, one staff, one. So, it enters the D. It had to guess what octave you meant. What it's going right. to do is it's going to pick the closest one to whatever you just entered. But, you haven't entered anything, so it just had to pick something. It, it likes to pick notes on the staff as opposed to off the staff. So, wow. if you don't like the octave it picked for you, mm -hmm. control up, control down. Note D6 oh, quarter, note D5, note D4 quarter voice, one measure, one beat, one staff, one. Now, I'm, I'm glad to know that as you're, you're saying these things out loud, you're, you're giving them the numbers D4, D5, D6, because there's different standards for how those numbers work. And every once in a while, people who learned a different way of numbering them, it gets annoyed that MuseScore uses the numbering we use. But it sounds like that's the numbering you're, you're used to. Yes. Good. Um, <laughs> yes. Otherwise, we might have to add an option for that. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. So, you just entered a D. I did. You can now enter as many other notes as you want. The quarter note rides. It is, it is ah. until, you're, until, you, uh, until you get tired of entering quarter notes. Uh, you, so enter a couple more quarter notes. Okay. C. Note C for quarter B. So note B three quarter voice one measure. It's picking the closest three, three, octave. Right? Mm -hmm. So now let's imagine you've just entered three quarter notes. This is the this piece is in four four. You got one beat left in this measure. Now mm -hmm. Braille is divided up into measures too, right? Yes. Do you actually have a bar line character or is it just like a space or something? Do you remember? There's a beginning and an end. Oh, okay. Yeah, I need I need to uh, yeah, there, there's. I need to learn more about uh, Braille music too. So do I. Yeah. Well, we. we yeah, will, and I'm the Braille reader. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we will be doing that. Yes. Okay. So, you've got one beat left in this measure. Let's enter a couple eighth notes. Okay. So four, five, six again. We're eighth quarter half. So you need the four. Four. Now enter a couple more notes. Or just enter one for now. G. Note G three eighth voice one measure one beat four staff one. D. Note D3, note D4. Nice, beautiful. So there you go, you, you heard the note get entered. When you say, when you press the letter, it read the letter you pressed, you heard the note, and then there's a little pause, and then it reads you everything about the note that you, you know, probably could have heard for yourself, except the duration, because you wouldn't have right. known the duration when in just by hearing the pitch because it just enters a blah True. It, doesn't, it doesn't have it doesn't hold it the right length True, because you need to know how many beats yeah. there are you gotta know the tempo yeah and MuseScore just doesn't when you enter a note it always plays at the same length it doesn't matter what the okay. tempo is it doesn't matter whether you entered a half note when you the entering of the note is always just a half a second that is a good thing to know yeah so don't expect longer notes to sound longer while you're entering them, which is kind of good because okay. otherwise you have to wait for whole notes. Right? <laughs> and no one wants to have to wait for the dang whole note. I know. So, um, all right, so you've just entered a bunch of notes. Um, and uh, the cursor is, there's a cursor that's sort of telling you where the next note you're going to enter is, has now moved into the next measure. If you enter another note now, it's going to tell you that you're in measure two. So go ahead and enter another note of whatever duration you want. Okay. If I were to enter a note now, would it be eighth note still? Yep. Okay. C. Note C four eighth voice one measure two beat one staff one. Okay. Sorry, it said measure two. So the fact that all that information was presented, a lot of which didn't well, the only thing that didn't change was the voice one and the staff one, the measure changed but Change. the others didn't so like I said I, I would like us to be able to not read the stuff that uh, that didn't change but you tell me to what extent do you just get used to that because to me that reads a little too fast for me to process that information mm -hmm. but you're more used to doing that than I am right how did that feel to you how it's reading the information does it feel like it's gonna be hard to understand it feels like it's going to be easy to understand if I pay attention okay so, yeah, if we put in a little pause after, because I... The, the, like a the, comma. Yeah. Because um, there are some places where it does pause sort of inexplicably to me, why there's like a pause between one thing it reads and another. So I don't even know why it's pausing between some things, but I wish it paused 
after the voice, and I'll, I might look at that because that feels like that would be useful information. Um, but again, if, if we can make it so it just doesn't read what, what didn't change, that's probably even better. Okay, so um, that's the basics of entering notes. Wow. And for most of what you need to do in foundations, that's it. You're entering pitches and, and uh, um, pitches and durations. Now you will need to enter music in different clefs and so forth. Okay. Um, so one of the things that we'll want to do is start you a new score that's yeah. using a, a, a grand staff, a treble clef and a bass clef together. Yes. Um, so we're going to open a new score. Okay. Um, or start a new score. Okay. I should say, Control N is a fairly standard shortcut for new things. New score, right? wizard dialog, yes. create new score, enter score information, colon. Title, edit, enter score, title. Title. It wants you to type a title. What shall we title this? How about... How about sample? S A P E one. Sample one. Okay. Subtitle, edit, enter score, subtitle. E-X-E-R-E-N-T-N. Composer, edit, enter the composer's name. E-L-R-E-N-T-N-O. Lyricist, edit, enter the lyricist's name. So you don't have to enter anything into these. Copyright, edit, enter copy. Next, grader, enter template search, edit, filter template scores by name or category. So you are now in a template selector, which allows you to select whether you're writing a single line treble clef score like that other one was or a grand staff or uh, you know a wind a wind quintet or a uh, symphonic band or an orchestra piece or a jazz combo there's all these different templates to select from so what you right now you are in a search bar it didn't tell you that but you're in a search bar where you can search for a template but mm -hmm. you can also just press tab and then then you can browse the templates with the up and down arrows okay Template list, template list, tree view. Choose a template to use as a starting point for your score. Treble clef. Choose in tr bass clef, grand staff. Grand staff Here is we the go. one we want to write. Yeah, so then you can now just hit return to take you to the next screen. All right, here's your turn. Enter time signature colon. Grouping enter a numerical time signature or choose one of the time signature symbols. Custom numerical time signature radio button checked. Enter a numerical time signature mm -hmm. such as four slash four or six slash eight. I don't know what, what, what is reading there because I, none of that information okay. was on the screen, but it's it's reading a lot of really good information. Yeah, it <laughs> um, is. So it's it's basically there's some radio buttons there that lets you select. Right now, it's it's there's you can enter a time signature by actually selecting numbers, but. Music notation also has a special symbol that looks like a C that gets used for what's called common time, which is the same as 4-4. Four, four. Okay. So when it was reading you about radio buttons, uh, that's what it was telling you is you can you can change to displaying this C, but you don't want to do that. Let's just enter a regular time signature. Okay. So right now, uh, I'm actually not sure what where you are right now, so I will let you figure that, that out. Yeah, Custom see. numerical beats in a measure spin button for the numerator or upper number in the time signature. Yeah. Beat unit down combo mm -hmm. box for the denominator or lower four, number four time? in the yeah. time signature. If you want to make it 3-4, can you figure out how to do that? Beats in a measure 5, 3. Custom beats in a measure spin button 3 the numerator or upper number in the time signature. Beat unit down combo box for the denominator or lower yep. number. You got it. You got it. All right. So go ahead and hit. I th well, hit tab. There's more pick things. Pick up measure check box not checked. Begin so the score. Pick up with measure. Complete measure. Yeah, well, well, do you, you know what we mean by that? Where it, where it begins. It, so it's like if you have like the, like the star single banner say, uh -huh. oh, say, right? Yeah. That O is beat three. It's like a, right? Because O, oh, say, right. is beat one. Yep. O is a pickup measure. It's it, it's only one beat long. Oh. And again, I don't know that, I don't know how Braille does that, but it probably has something similar. Okay, so that's that's what that's referring to. Yeah, so pickup measure. There's another cool. word for it called anacrusis. Anacrusis. That's, anacrusis is a more technical term. It's more commonly used in England or Britain in general. Okay. Um, pickup measure is the more common English okay. term. Okay. Also, just for just so you know, uh, bar is in English we use the word bar as sort of slang for measure. Uh -huh. In in Great Britain, bar is the official term measure. They wouldn't even know what you're talking about. 
Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So there's a there's basically a checkbox there for whether you want to pick up, and if so, you give it it you tell it the time signature also. Mm -hmm. Let's just say no. All right. Uh, then hit tab again. See what Enter else. Enter number of measures grouping hit Number core. of measures. You can yeah. also add or remove measures after creation of the score. So it measures didn't... spin button 32, the number of measures initially present go. in the score. There you go. 32 is where it just said is the default number of measures. So you, you whatever. You can remove them later, but okay. you, or you can just pick a new number now. I don't care. Let's stick with 32. Okay. Then hit tab. Plus back enter button alt plus B. Finish enter button alt plus F. Yeah, that's what we want. Muse score three left paren. 3.3.0 unstable right paren. Colon. Unstable. Sample one that's window. Because I built it. Split button. All right. Split button. When it's done. Split button. When it's done. Split buttoning Split button. us. Yeah. Score rest measure voice one measure one beat one staff one. So after creating a new score, it selects the very first thing in that in that score, the very first rest in measure one. Mm -hmm. So it's all ready for you to start entering some notes now. Wow. So go ahead and enter a couple notes onto that top staff there. Mm-hmm. Do we use one, two, or three at all for duration? All right, so I say four, five, and six is half quarter, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, eighth quarter eighth half. Quarter half. Um, it's every, uh, the, the smaller numbers, faster notes, bigger numbers, slower notes. So three is a sixteenth, two mm -hmm. is a thirty-second, mm -hmm. one is a sixty-fourth. Seven's a whole note, eight's a, a brev. Woo! Have you encountered brevs before? No! You get to in, in, um, in uh, what's the name of that ensemble you're in again? In Collegium. Collegium. Uh, we, uh, so uh, Regis University here has um, a, a fairly unusual thing by uh, small music program standards is an actual performing ensemble doing Renaissance music. And uh, yeah, brevs oh, are definitely so a thing because you, be you will be dealing with time signatures like, you know, Eight two, and <laughs> or, what, or maybe not eight two, but whatever. Whoa. There'll be there'll be long because because the eighth notes aren't really a thing. The music is mostly measured in in half notes and whole notes and occasional quarter notes and a lot and brevs, which is a double whole note. So anyhow, um, go ahead and enter some notes. You're in you you created a three four score, right? Oh wait a minute, I never saw what the key about signature. The key signature. I was oh wow. I never saw the key How? signature. So there is change? a screen for the key signature, but it got skipped. Yeah, it did. Odd. It should have happened before the time signature screen. What I have noticed. Because the key's important. It is. Really so important. So let's. Um, I guess because it got skipped, we'll go and. Um, uh, I, we're going to come back to that in a second, um, but I first want to show you about uh, the, just making sure you can get between the staves and, and everything's okay there. Then we'll then we'll look yeah. at how to add the key signature because that's going to involve using the palette, which is the which is the thing that is being worked on right now to make more accessible. The way you have to use the palette right now is going to be a pain in the butt, mm -hmm. and you're better off like the, doing as much as possible without needing the palettes, which is why I want you to be learning the shortcuts and and doing things. But apparently the key signature's got a glitch right now, so we're going to need the palette for that. Okay. Because it should have asked you for the key signature after you chose right. the template before the time signature there should have been a key signature selection right. and, it, and it just didn't happen for some reason. I think it has to do with pressing enter on the next button. Remember it said next greater than or something like that or angle yeah, bracket or something? Like less back button, next yeah. greater button. I think Those if you are had, really common. Yeah, I think if you had used the greater button instead of hitting enter on the next, maybe, it w I think hitting enter is what oh. caused it to go on, but I'm not sure. I'll have to figure that out. But I know when I you know. click the next button, it works if you physically yeah. click it, but that's not what you want to do. There's a ton of back and next greater buttons that have the less than and greater than okay. signs. That, that's good to know that that's common. It's um, very, very okay. common, especially so, yeah. in like install shield, okay. wizards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen those for sure. Yeah. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll eventually go back and take another look at that and see if uh, we can make the wizard show up. But I need you to see how to use the palace. So go ahead and enter some notes here. It selected the first, the first rest of the top staff right now. So go ahead and enter some notes in the top staff. Okay. Six. Rest half voice one measure one B E. Okay. Note E five half voice one measure one B one staff one. So you entered some notes, but you didn't do the thing that you should do before entering notes, which was press N for ah. so the thing is Muse score is somewhat forgiving about that. Mm -hmm. If you press 
um, a note, if you try to enter a note when you're not in note input mode, it says, mm -hmm. all right, I'm going to put you in note input mode. Ah, however, I didn't know. Yeah. However, when you pressed six, mm -hmm. it, if you Internet press, Explorer. if you press one of those number keys, um, while you're not in note input mode, mm -hmm. it actually changes the note See, that you've selected. Oh, wow. So you had a whole rest selected and it changed it into a half rest when you press six. Wow. Then when you press the E, it actually put you in note input mode and entered an E. So uh, that could be okay, but that's, that's going to be important for you to know is that uh, you, you want to go into note input mode. Otherwise, when you press those number keys, it's going to be changing your score. Aha. Uh -huh. I didn't know if no input mode was kind of, if it stayed in it as it, it went into a new oh, score. Oh, it stayed, no, it won't stay in it to win uh -huh. the new score. And then what you'll want to do is, is after entering some notes, then press N again or escape to get out of node input mode so that you can start browsing it and doing other things to it. No more node input mode. So did you, you just went to the help, right? Oddly enough. Did you not mean to? Yes, I did not mean to. Okay. I wonder, I, I'm thinking you pressed F1. Yeah, because... The touch bar. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Touch bar. Okay. All right. So, uh, can you Alt Tab or whatever the shortcut is back back to MuseScore because you are in a web browser now. Let's see. File <laughs> sub menu Alt Help Bar MuseScore. To... What is Alt? File sub new exit X. Internet Explorer dialog. Do you close current close alt Gmail dash main landmark? I told you to close all the tabs. Mm. Five new tab exit. Yeah, it's actually a separate C colon window. Blank blank. Oh. Internet Muse score three left paren Muse score three development C colon slash user note E five half voice ah. measure one beat one staff. But that was an E flat. So what did you just hit? I hit the down arrow. And what did you intend for that to do? I wasn't sure that I was in my window. You were. Okay, <laughs> so you were in your window, and what sure. that did is the down arrow we hadn't actually looked at yet. Up and down arrows changes the pitches of the note you just entered. You enter an E by t typing E to make it E flat, you hit the down arrow. Ah, so that's how you flat or sharpen notes. Yep, up and down. Up and down. Yep, control up and down, remember when up and down an octave. Up and down on their own, change Goes up the pitch. And down one half semitone. Yes. And it'll spell the flats on the way down and sharps on the way up, basically. Okay. There's occasions where, like, if you need there to be a B sharp for some reason, you'll need yeah. to, like, use other means. And there's a toolbar for that. And if we need to deal with it, we'll deal with it. But um, Would C flat be the case, too? Yeah, same, same with C flat. Because if you hit the down arrow on a C, it's going to go, oh, you meant B. B. It's not going to do C. Unless you're in a key in, in which, flat, in which if you're in the key of D flat major, it will actually let there be a C flat for what C it's worth. Oh, wow. Yeah, because it knows yeah. that, that, the, that C flat is more closely related to the key than B natural is. Right. So, um, and certainly if it's actually in the key, it'll, uh, it'll use it too. Okay. So, um, so yeah, you just entered an E flat. So hit up arrow again, it'll change it to an E natural. Note E five half voice one measure one beat one staff one. All right. And yet it, it didn't read that it was a flat. Yeah, hit down arrow. Five half voice one measure one beat one staff one accidental flat. Oh yeah. yay! Yeah, it no, there it did. Half voice one. Accidental so flat. flat. Yeah, at the end. So it's at the very end. Yeah, which I think it should have read E flat from the very beginning. I think it was just that right. E flat blah 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 then accidental flat if it's going to read that because mm -hmm. just like the F sharp that was in the key it should have just said F sharp right from the beginning. Right. There is no accidental, but it should have said F sharp. So yeah. similarly, that should have said E flat right from the beginning, and then also told you about the accidental. Right. I'm, I'm guessing we're in, in like C major, A minor, something like that by default. Oh, yes, you are in C major slash A minor. So let's go ahead and get down to the bass clef set. So you've entered a half note now. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead and hit, oh, let's do a tie. We haven't done ties yet. Oh, yeah. So that E is a half note. You're in 3, 4. You've got one beat left in this measure, right? So mm -hmm. let's tie it to an eighth note. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to select the eighth note first with 4. 4. And then hit the plus sign. Plus, note E5, eighth voice, one measure, one beat, three staff, one end of tie. So it entered the E and tied it at once because tied notes are always the same pitch. So you didn't need to ah, tell it it was an E. They're always you just, the same pitch? Yeah, ties okay. are always the same pitch. Okay. So um, 
So you, to enter a tie, you selected, you select the duration, duration and then press plus, and it will enter the note and tie it for you. Oh, we have a question or a comment. Yes. Oh yay! Quite behind since just joined, uh, beginning of the stream. Uh, uh, so the question is, does MuseScore work with any screen reader, not just NVDA? So we know it works with NVDA. We believe it probably works with Orca on Linux. We know it does not work with JAWS very well. But we accidentally discovered it partially <laughs> works with JAWS. We, we did. <laughs> um, it just it needed it needed help. Uh, when when we pressed escape, it read the status bar. It didn't read the status bar as we hit the cursor keys, but it did when we hit escape. So we know it's capable of it. We just need to figure out what's what's missing, what's not hooked up right. Voiceover, I think, is worse off. Yes. So. Um, that stuff that we continue want to work on, and we should mention that uh, we've been working in conjunction. Ah, just got to the, they just got to the answer too. Um, mm -hmm. But we should mention we've been working with RNIB, the Royal National Institute, Institute of, of Great Britain, Institute of Blind People. I think. Blind people. It used to be for the blind, and then it was of the blind. Now I think I, I forget whatever they changed what it stands for um, to make it whatever the currently political correct right. thing is. Absolutely. We had a pickup today. Uh, I, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I am. Um, so there's this organization here in in the in the states. I don't know if it. I think it's uh, nationwide, and it's like a charity where you can donate stuff, and they'll set up the thrift stores. It's called ARC. You are familiar with that one? Hmm. Yes. It's they're now they're just called the ARC. They're just called the ARC now, oh, but it originally yeah. stood for uh, Association of Retarded Citizens. Ah. Yeah, they don't use that that abbreviation so much anymore. I bet not. That was back, you know, in the fifties, I think. I bet not. Um, so anyhow, we just had them pick up some, you know, stuff for the thrift store. Um, uh, so uh, so anyhow, RNIB has been working with us and giving us feedback, and we've occasionally gotten some grants from them to do some work. And I think uh, there's someone working under one of those grants right now to do some things. And whatever it was, we were just talking about. <laughs> yeah. our, oh, the screen reader the, stuff. He's been, yeah, so he's uh, the, Peter Jonas has been looking a little bit at uh, um, uh, what's involved in working with the other screen readers. But we also know that mostly we are limited by the Qt or Qt framework libraries that we use. And so we've been submitting bugs to them when we discover things that aren't working. And uh, so we're, that's part of, you know, there's, there's, there's multiple players here. And when something doesn't work with NVDA, sometimes it's NVDA's fault, but that's open source, so we're able to, like, bug them about it and occasionally even submit a fix ourselves. Um, okay, so, um, all right, you just entered an E. Uh, you entered the, you, find, you, just, you, you discovered the accidental. We just did a tie. Let's get down, you get you to the bottom staff. So okay. alt down. We, we, we talked about alt down before. Rest measure voice one measure one okay. beat one staff two. So now you're on staff two. It's staff two. And you would have to know that, oh, it's base clef, because it didn't tell that to you. If you wanted oh. to be aware of that, hit alt left a few times, and I think it's going to get you there. Except it won't because you're in node input mode. When you're in node input mode, it yeah. won't. Yeah, there you go. Time signature three slash four time measure one beat one staff two. And alt left again. Base clef measure one beat oh. one staff two. There it is. Because it's clef, then time signature, base then, clef. yeah. So there's the base clef. So now go ahead and press N again to get back to node input mode. N. Rest measure voice one measure one beat one staff two. So you're where you want to be on staff two. So now you can enter some notes on this staff. Cool. C. Note C four quarter voice one measure one beat one staff two. Okay. It's going to work just like it did when reading. Alt left, well, alt up and down will move you between the staves. Alt left and alt right will move you from note to note, um, uh, but only from note to note. It won't stop on bar lines and things like that while you're in note input mode. It'll only go between notes. Gotcha. Actually, I think that's true. Go ahead and hit because <laughs> yeah, usually we just use, usually we just use left and right uh, when we're in note input mode. But if you're used to okay. using alt left and alt right, I would hope it would still do reasonable things. So let's try Help. it. Help alt plus split button. It looks like alt right is doing nothing because you're in node input mode. So just be aware that when you're in node input mode, if you want to browse around, uh, Rest half voice you can use left seat. and right. Okay. But don't use up and down because that's going to change the pitch. Right. So that's a little thing that takes a little getting used to because normally we're using left and right to move left and right, and then 
up and down changes pitch. So right. we, if we were trying to get, if I was trying to get to another staff, I could click that staff. But I use up and I use alt up and down all the time. But occasionally I forget the alt or I, you know, whatever. So you just have to pay attention to the feedback you hear. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So let's finally fix the key signature, and then we'll say that we've now seen most of what we need to see here. Okay. There's plenty more to the program, but but. Yeah. The main gist of things is entering nodes, browsing around, and now this final thing that we're going to look at is entering stuff from palettes. Most things that you can enter into the score that you will need, you can do without needing to deal with the palettes. Like we saw how to do a tie, we saw how to do accidentals. Mm -hmm. There's other things you can do with keyboard shortcuts that we can that I'll you know teach you or you can read about. Um, but accessing the palettes is going to be its own thing. So. Right. The first thing that I've got to do for you is there is a shortcut to reach the palette window that ah. isn't set up by default because there's a palette search mechanism. There's a shortcut to transfer you to the palette search box, mm -hmm. but it's not configured by default. So I got to configure that for you right now. Okay. Um, it's possible. New edit all plus e. To menu. um. Undo it's possible to customize shortcuts. The cus Use the shortcut customization shortcuts is tab. accessible, shortcuts but tab. it's a pain in the butt. Edit. So um, L. I wouldn't expect that you would ever want to customize the shortcuts because it's going to be painful. Possible but painful. Use action action color. Show action color. Here we go. Save saves. Define define. So enter we're going to make a palette shortcut. I'm going to make it be. Sequence. Let's see. I don't know what. Note I can't colon, remember what's available. Control plus shift um, plus one. Quote is one key combination. To enter a shortcut, choose a key sequence. I'm going to try. For example, control. Control shift P. Shortcut no. conflicts. Control shift S. New shortcut. No. Um. What about what about Alt Control P? Clear enter button. That work. Okay, I just tried Control Shift S. That worked also, but that if uh, Control short. Shift Alt, clear, enter, clear, what would you said? How about clear, Alt Control button, P? Press clear, new short. Alt Control P. You got it. All right. All right. Add the new shortcut. P for Add yep. Muse. Okay. Okay. Enter button pressed. Okay. All right. Split button. So Split button. you are still in node input mode. I honestly don't know what's going to happen Split if you button. try to go to the palettes while you're still Split. in node input mode. Um, did you try controlling? Yeah, it looks like it's yeah. not going to work while you're in node input mode, yeah. so get out of it. Ooh, what happened? You pressed N, but it didn't take you out of... Oh, my gosh, you are in the palette. You are in the oh, palette. Oh, and I didn't read it. Um, okay. Okay, so uh, okay, let's 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 stop for a second here. Let me let me take you out of this, and let me try to reproduce where, where we just were, so I can... Score note uh, Internet ah, no, 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 no. Oh, it's one is right next to the escape. Score note scene yeah. or quarter voice. Um, all right, so we're and. in node input mode, and then... Edit. All right. Edit. Is that what it said? Yep. That's exactly what it said. So when, you, when we pressed Control-Alt-P, um, it actually did put you in the palette search. It just didn't say oh, that it did. It just didn't so it. that needs to read. Okay. And really, it should read any command, probably, but that one seems especially crucial. Like when you say N, it shouldn't just say N, it should say entering node input mode or something like that. Right. I feel like. Like node input mode or exiting. Yeah, okay. Read command, especially palette search. All right, so the way the palette normally works is you select something in the score mm -hmm. and then you double click something in the palette. That's the way it normally works. Or you drag and drop. Um, yeah. Neither of those options for, for people following who are like unfamiliar with this world. Basically, the mouse is a non-entity. Uh, in fact, I'm sort of surprised you don't have it disabled, your touchpad. Ah, because when I'm on Mac OS, it'll double as a, it'll be, it'll act like my iPhone screen. Oh, okay. Where I would double tap. I see. And whatnot. Okay. But I would think that since it's on a different partition, disabling the mouse on Windows wouldn't matter. Yeah. 
Yeah, it could. Be, yeah, probably not, because uh, probably Windows has its own setting for it. But, yeah. but I don't know how that works. Um, in any case, um, so yeah, double double clicking or drag and drop are the usual ways of adding things from the palette. However, and we are currently in the process. There's a, a student through the Google Summer of Code program working on uh, making the palettes more accessible. Um, more directly. However, the one sort of backdoor way we have of making the palette acceptable, accessible mm -hmm. is through work done a previous year in this Google Summer of Code program, a student that I mentored who um, added not just, she, she's the one who added the alt left and alt right commands and she's also the one who added this, no she didn't add the palette search but she made the palette search results keyboard navigatable. Wow. So the way you're going to access the palettes is you're going to use the palette search to find the thing that you want to add and then you can press enter and it will enter it on whatever is selected. Okay. Now normally you enter things from the palette not in node input mode Correct. but I think it's going to work. I think this is going to work. I think that I think the system is going to realize well you're in measure one when you try to enter a key signature it's going to apply that key signature to measure one without you having to select the measure or anything like that so we're going to test this theory too okay. so i want you to type in what key would you like it to be let's see let's make it hmm. let's go to g major all right try just typing g i don't know that that's going to map match anything g. ah it did okay so you typed g and I see now everything on that starts with a G in the palette is now mm -hmm. displayed. So you're going to hit up and down arrow to get there. Oh, wait a minute. It's not reading. Correct. Dang it. It's not reading the results of that. I, well, that's not very that. useful then. I wonder, I wonder why not. I thought it did, but if that's not going to work, that obviously needs to be down um, combo at a G. Right. Uh, try, try just yeah, it's moving. You're hitting you're hitting the arrow keys, and I see it highlighting things. It's just not reading what it's highlighting. Just, yeah. Um. All right. So obviously, uh, palette search screen reader. I'm writing my note because obviously we can't do anything with the palette until it's going to read it. Yeah. And hopefully that's a simple fix. Um, all right. Okay. So, um, but mostly you're not going to need the palettes for things because if assuming we figure out how to get the key signature in the piece in the first place, which it should have done, and I think we can fix that just by having you use the, the greater key instead okay. of clicking next. Um, okay. All right, so it is right now, you'll have to take my word for it on the G. Okay. Um, hit enter or oh. return, whatever. Yeah, same thing. Split button. Split button. Oh, wow. Split mm -hmm. button. Split so, button. So what it actually Score did. Note C, four quarter voice, one measure, one beat, one staff, two. It entered the G key signature, but only on the bottom staff. That's not cool. Oh, yeah. So I want to find out really quick. So that's also good for me to know that that's the case because we don't. Most people don't even know about this. I mean, they barely know about the palette search. But if they even knew about it, they're still going to double click what they see. This use of the keyboard True. navigation of it is like a feature that's there for accessibility um, purposes. But um, most people probably don't know that that's a thing. So. Do I have to hit oh, FN delete to be deleted? Note C4, yes, quarter voice, one yeah. measure, one okay. beat, one staff, two. On Max, it's all the same. Right, half but I thought voice, maybe one beat, one because staff, the auto windows partition, that wouldn't be the case, but uh, it is. It is, because okay. it's a Mac computer. Edit. Keyboard. Okay. All right. G. Split button. Okay. So, Split apparently. Button. Split button. All right. Split button. I got another thing to try. Score note. Okay. Time sign key signature G major E minor measure one beat one staff one. Yeah. Hmm. Edit all file all, all right, plus so... F. Edit all plus E. Z. Uh, Muse score no I selection. Command Z. I keep wanting it to be control because Z. Know. Oh wait a minute. No, it, it is, is control, control Z. Don't what do I do? Note E5 half, voice right. one measure, if score note E5 half, measure. range, so, score, score range, so, edit G. 
split button. Ah, okay. So split what I just button. discovered in uh -huh. a little button. fiddle interview, because I said, split I told you the keys show only got added on one oh. staff. Uh -huh. Apparently, if you have a note selected, uh -huh. it will add the key signature just to that staff. If you uh -huh. have a measure selected, on the other hand, it will add it to the whole score. Because oh. that's usually how we would do this. Or if you double click, it'll add it to the whole score. So let me just briefly tell you how to wow. select, and then we're going to go back and check out the keyboard wizard, and then I think we're going to wrap up. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, go ahead and um, take over again. Yes. And um, I left you in a state where a measure is selected right now. Hit Alt left or Alt right or Alt something. Okay. Okay, so apparently, oh, you're still in Am this I palette in search. Input mode? No, you're not. No. You're in, you're still in the palette thing. How about escape? Okay, let's see. No selection. Okay, that yeah, unselected. Must have All right, it. fine. So when you lose the selection, one of the things in the current version of MuseScore is once you lose the selection, the uh -huh. next time you hit Alt Left or Alt Right, it starts over at the beginning of the score. That's uh -huh. one of the things that is fixed in my version where it remembers the last thing you selected. So if you now hit Alt Right, it'll pick up where you left off. So hit Alt Right. All right. Tie start measure one start beat one end measure one end beat uh -huh. three. It selected the tie one. because you were on a note and it went to the tie. So I need you to get to the select the measure. So go ahead and hit Alt Left to get to the beginning note of that tie. Note E5 half voice one measure okay. one beat one staff one start of tie. So that's beat one mm -hmm. of that measure. I want you to hit. So think about in in like Microsoft Word or something. If you wanted to select a word, yes. How do you do that? I would, if I were on a a PC, I would hit. Let's see. Can I think it's Control Shift right arrow. Do that here. Range selection start measure one start beat one end measure one end beat three point five. Same thing here. It selected the measure. Control shift right arrow will select to the end of the measure. So ah. you just selected a measure. A measure is kind of analogous to a word. Yeah, and okay. that's why control right arrow. Remember, I asked you to hit control right arrow before to move to the next measure. Yes. That's just like control right arrow will move you to the next word. That's right. So we we base, so right arrow and left arrow move you a character at a time, right? A letter at a time, mm -hmm. a note at a time, yeah. um, and then control with it moves a measure at a time. Uh -huh. so, um, so to select something in general, it's shift, you know, you can shift extend the right. selection one letter at a time with shift left, shift right, yep. or shift control left is a measure For or words. a word at a time. So you just selected a, a measure. So, okay. you know, there's the facility to do things like copy and paste and all stuff like that. I will say that navigating the interface to successfully use copy and paste without seeing what you're doing, I'm not sure how pleasant that experience would be, but I can't think of any particular reason why it wouldn't actually work. It should work. Yeah. So, um, any case, if you ever do find the need to attach a key signature from the palette, uh, if assuming we get the palettes to read, mm -hmm. we just need to know that you need to select a measure other than just cl clicking a note. Um, right. Usually, when you when you enter something from the palette, it applies to whatever is selected. Some things, like you know, an accent mark, say, uh, or a, a dynamic marking, get applied to just a note. But things like key signatures get applied to full measures, so you have to select the measure for it to work right. Correct. All right, so let's create one more score and see if we can get the key signature thing to show up. So Control N. Okay, here we go. New score we don't need a dialogue. title, so Create just hit subtitle just edit, hit enter. Title at template search edit filter okay. template scores. So pick, go back, yeah, get, get us to that grand staff template, template again. Base club, grand staff, template list, template now list, what happens if you just hit the, use as the greater than? Point for your score. Nothing? Nothing. Okay, so apparently that's Respect. just a Next, picture of a greater than sign, sign, not an actual indication that you can press the greater than sign. That's Ooh. a little unfortunate. But go ahead and hit tab. Finish enter button all no. plus F. Keep keep getting around. We need to get Canceling. back to that next button. Template search edit filter template less back next greater enter button. Okay, don't hit enter, because that's what you did last time, right? Mm -hmm. Try space. Space. <sighs> key signature grouping, choose a key signature. Here it is. There it is. Key signature colon. C major. A minor. C major. A minor. A, a minor. minor. <laughs> a minor. Open slash atonal. So the oh. next one is for atonal music or or other music that you don't want to transpose because it knows wow. how to transpose music 
automatically like are you familiar with how like clarinets and other trumpets the music needs to be written in a different key from everyone else yeah and, and yeah so the if there's some types of music where you don't want that to happen like you just want everyone to show no key signatures that's A-tonal. what that open a tonal is for wow. but keep but keep using the arrow keys and you'll get to the other key signatures g major e minor g major d major b minor a major f minor <laughs> A major, F minor. No, it's the F sharp minor. Why is it? Okay, read another one. Go, go, keep going. E major, C minor. All right. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's not reading the sharps. It's not reading the sharps. Good thing I took theory. Key sig. Otherwise, I would have been misled. (laughs) Like, what? But how do I pick between F minor and A major? You but know. that's going to be unfortunate when you get to like the keys that where the major key is also well you'll there's no is there any keys in which they're both yeah like uh f sharp major d sharp minor mm-hmm. is going to uh mm-hmm. yeah in a couple in a couple clicks you're going to read one where it reads them both wrong okay <laughs> d major g minor yeah that's wrong okay. but at least the B was right. G major, G major. But now, yeah. now the next one. B flat. F major, D minor. Right, that's F sharp, D sharp. <laughs> so you got to oh, know your circle. Because I would have thought. Yeah. So natural. you got to know you. You got to know your circle of fifths at this point and realize that hey, it's been reading one more sharp every time. It's not done with the sharps. Ah. <laughs> so, okay. So. Yeah. Yep. 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 C major, A minor. No, it's not. It is C sharp, A sharp. <laughs> now one C more. C major. A minor. No, nope, now that's C flat and A flat. One more. G major, E minor. No, nope, that's G flat and E flat. <laughs> Keep going. D major, B minor. D flat and B flat. A major, F minor. A flat and F minor. Got it. D major, okay. A major. So F minor. that sucks. Um, so uh, yeah, key signature is not cool. So I will see if I can get that fixed before uh, school starts. Also, so yeah, I'm look. I'm wow. looking at this as a to-do list of which things that I think I can reasonably fix before school starts and which things seem most crucial to fix and this obviously seems pretty crucial. So um, my guess is, uh, for note to self, um, there's two different flat signs that are used in how things are worked There's uh, and we're probably trying to read the wrong one. There's different ways to flat. It's like capital and lowercase letters. So the world, it used to be the case that all fonts had a flat, not all fonts had a flat sign. Many fonts would have a flat sign, a sharp sign, and a few random other characters of music. But that was it. Wow. They didn't, most most fonts would only have a few token music characters. Then a new standard came along for music fonts. And now most fonts, not no, not most fonts, fonts that are designed to be music fonts now will have tons of other symbols, not just flat and sharp and treble clef. Right. Um, and I think we are trying to, so now there's a new flat sign that's part of the new standard. And we are obviously, uh, I think we are trying to read the wrong version of that flat sign. It's, uh, so it's either the old one that we're reading or the new one when it should be the other way around. Wow. So, something like that. Uh, okay. Um, so that was this was quite instructive for me. <laughs> yes, it, it was quite in, informative for me as well. I, right. I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. This has been a lot of fun, and I hope people. For watching, sure. I mean, I see the, there's still yeah. people here, uh, still people on the chat. Not not a whole lot in the way of questions or anything, but again, I expect many more people will be uh, paying, uh, re- checking this out later. All right. Sure. So we've been going on for quite some time. Haven't been watching the clock, but I'm quite sure it's been a long time. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I hope uh, yeah. anyone who's um, watching with an eye towards learning to use MuseScore, if there's any other blind musicians wanting to uh, to learn how to use things, hopefully you found this instructive and maybe Absolutely. just instructive enough to be useful. Now I can tell you that most of what we just saw sort of works with the installed MuseScore, but NVDA doesn't talk to MuseScore that well right now right. unless you're using the version that I've built because I well actually no I didn't fix anything about the screen reader it's no. it's the version of Qt I'm using works with NVDA right. um, but that's going to be fixed as soon as we update to a new version of Qt um, so like the next update will certainly fix that but I've also some of the stuff like the fact that that the title got read 
Um, when when we loaded, uh, Mary had a little SATB, and she first hit Alt-Right, it read the title. That would yeah. not be the case in the current version of MuseScore. I, that was something I did. I added to make sure it would read the title first. And, and some other things about how Alt-Left and Alt-Right were skipping certain things they shouldn't have been skipping. And so I've, I've, I've fixed a bunch of things. Uh, and I, I think we can reasonably expect that, you know, within the next month or two, there will be an official release of, of MuseScore that will work as well as what we have here, hopefully with a few of the bugs that we uh, just discovered also fixed. It's it's really exciting to, to get a much cheaper alternative. Yes, uh, it, and it's exciting to me too. It was exciting when I didn't have to keep paying for Finale and, and, and just... Yeah, having something that's open source and works really well, and yeah. I think we're I think we can see that it's going to do what it needs to do for you with just some slight more tweaking and little bits of hand holding. But I, I right. think I think we can do a lot of what we need with this. I do too. All right. So uh, the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be on uh, well, vacation. We'll call it vacation. Um, I'll be out of town. Um, so I'm not sure. I, I think I'll probably still do cafe um, from from where I'll be at, uh, but we'll see, and I'll see what I feel like talking about as a topic. Um, but in any case, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. Um, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for uh, being the, the guinea pig on this. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Okay, and uh, with that said, I think uh, we will sign off. Okay. See you all next week.